What's up everybody, my name is Grady Ali and welcome to my YouTube channel. And today I'm going to share about how you could become an embedded software, not just any software engineer, not just, not, not just like the regular software engineer here. I'm going to talk about how you could become the embedded software engineer so that you could become an embedded software engineer or at least like have an idea what do you need to do in order to become an embedded software engineer, what skills you need, what, what else might you need. So make sure you hit that like button, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, and without further ado, let's get started. Whether you're planning to self-learn or go to university in order to become an embedded software engineer, you have some options. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna learn how to do C programming. It's the most common language for embedded software programming and hence why I'm recommending C as the first language to learn. You wanna master it, not just like, hey, I did hello world program, I'm, I'm good to go now. You wanna really understand how do the pointers and addresses work? How does multi-threading work in C programming? And you wanna learn about data structures as well. So those would be the general topics you would want to understand at least by minimum. Be very proficient with them, understand how do they work, which methods are faster, what is slower. Those are really important parts in, in any programming language. You, you wanna optimize your software for the best performance or best power efficiency. So. You would, you would want to keep all these things in mind. Later on, you can add on to languages like C++ and Python for later on. But honestly, focus on C first, that, that would be my go-to. There's plenty of C programming tutorials on YouTube, so go ahead and search around, look for good reviews and so on for things that would get you going essentially. Initially, just follow the tutorials and then move on to a project mindset. You don't want to just blindly follow tutorials all your life. You want to develop this concept that Yes, you were able to go through the tutorials, learn things, but now you can apply them in real life by yourself. So come up with projects that you think you would enjoy and make sure you can actually uh, execute them and, and go, go ahead and challenge yourself to do those projects so you can learn and practice your C programming skills. Well, now that you have mastered C programming, which I know you slackers did not do that, so you guys just jumped into the second point. We're like, okay, yeah, I, I know. I, I saw a tutorial five years ago about C programming, so I'm good to go now. But anyways, you, you need to move on and start, uh, start doing things on a development board. So that's where actually the, the, the embedded software program comes in where you start programming the microcontroller and uh, you will make it do things that you want it to do. I think the best place to start would be like Arduino or Raspberry Pi. If you really want to learn the, like about like the basic stuff of if you're not already familiar with those things. If you are already familiar, I would recommend looking into like TI and SDM32 or something like that to uh, get those development boards. And I'll list some development boards in the comment section below. So go check them out. They're just links to Amazon and you can purchase them. And if they're, they're affiliate links, so if you use them and uh, you buy something on Amazon from that, that's a way you can support this YouTube channel as well. The reason why I really recommend that Raspberry Pi and Arduino is because they have so many projects available for free for, and like the, the great tutorials, they literally will show you like how to connect things on a breadboard and like make these connections and how to connect these sensors and they give you an example code and you can do your own stuff with it. I think that's really helpful and beneficial, especially in the beginning for you to develop understanding how things work and how the sensors interact with a development board. As you're starting off to do your projects on the development board, during that process, you wanna learn about things like Superloop or a while loop, really a while loop. That's, that's really like the easiest way you can do embedded software programming. You will have this loop that will stay in it forever and it will execute things that you would tell it to execute. Next is like you want you want to learn about GPIOs, like how the buttons, switches, and LEDs work. So those are probably like one of the first things you will learn. Next one is like digital to analog conversion and analog to digital conversion. And again, those are one of the main topics that you will need in order to use sensors or use analog sensors or send out a uh, digital signal that you need to convert to an analog signal in order to make something happen. The next concept you want to learn about is interrupts. It's highly important so and it's very commonly used. You want to make sure you understand how it works on the development boards. Honestly, if you learn in one development board, kind of the concept is the same on other ones. So just, just having a general grasp of how things work on that would be very important. Next up is communication protocols. And this is this is a big one. This is highly 
and commonly used, but the main ones are like SBI, QSBI, SBI as Serial Peripheral Interface or QSBI, which is Quad Serial Peripheral Interface. And then you also have I squared C, then you have UART. You also have USART, which is the synchronous or asynchronous version of UART. So there are more advanced concepts like Bluetooth and USB that you would also want to learn later on. Next up is DMAs, which really is huge, huge help for, for any data processing. It allows you to have a single core system and you can say to the CPU that, hey, uh, set up a DMA to uh, using an SBI to collect data, constantly collect data from this external sensor. While that DMA is collecting that data into this specific memory location, the CPU is free to do whatever it wants. So it's not held up by anything else. So it really drastically can reduce uh, CPU overhead. Well, next up would be memory management. So you wanna learn about how a simple flash memory reads and writes work. So, and later on you can move on to DDR memory. Next up is RTOS system, which is real time operating system. So you definitely want to learn about this and how it works. You don't have to go into these crazy concepts, but again, this is why I was telling about, you wanna learn about how multi-threading works, how those semaphores work, how those threads work. So you, you wanna have that understanding of operating systems. So if you're in a university or you're, you're taking an online course or something like that, an operating systems course would be a good recommendation from me. Honestly, you would probably, for embedded systems, you would want to focus on free RTOS. There's obviously other ones you could also do, like Linux systems, Linux versions for embedded software. As you're learning about all these concepts, whether it's like all the communication protocols that I listed, GPIOs, and, and so on, you want to learn and develop an understanding how to read electrical schematics. You also wanna learn how to read data sheets. Those two are very, very important. You wanna learn how to like use those data sheets, whether it's a data sheet for the microcontroller or the development board that you're using, or if it's a data sheet for the sensor that you're using. Either one of those documents will give you an understanding how the sensor works, how the development board works. You can use that information to write the code properly based on what's given you in that documentation. There are also API documentation that you might want to use. For example, like Bluetooth it might have API libraries, USB might have API libraries, and you can take advantage of those API documentations. So definitely learn to handle the documentation. I, I can't emphasize this enough. Uh, a lot of people who actually start off initially, they have no clue how to search for things in the documentation. I just wanted to mention as a side note, kind of that there are various uh, embedded software engineering positions all around the world. And, and some embedded software engineers are highly involved on the hardware level, and they might even give suggestions to hardware engineers on what to put on the new PCBA board or how to change and optimize the board. And they, they know how to do like, analog filtering and like all these steps. On the other high and there might be embedded software engineers who barely do anything on the hardware side or like they, they never might not even touch the hardware. So it might be like a virtual environment that they work on. What I'm trying to say is you don't need to know how all the hardware works. I personally don't and that that is fine. Most of my work is done in writing software doing good reviews and documentation. As you keep going, you just wanna keep practicing and learning new things. There's so many projects you can do. There's so many more sensors and just become less dependent on tutorials. Look for inspiration from like YouTube videos, things that uh, other people have done in the past. Keep adding more sensors and do some data processing, learn about algorithms. There's a lot of advanced concepts and I highly recommend you for two dig into it and just, just have fun and enjoy learning. I have to break it to you, but knowing how to code and program embedded software doesn't make you an embedded software engineer. You want to brush up on your soft skills. Like honestly, learn about teamwork, problem solving, communication, and working under pressure. Those are highly important skills for you to have as an engineer, whether you, you might be an independent contractor, you might be doing freelance work or something like that, you still need to learn how to work as a team. You still need to learn how to communicate. And last thing for, for the soft skills, admit that you're wrong. It's like if, if you messed up something, the sooner you admit that something went wrong, 
the sooner the problem can be solved. Thank you so much guys for checking out this video. I truly, truly appreciate it. Make sure you hit that like button, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. And if you wanna support this YouTube channel, you can do that by using the link down in the description below to get your free two stocks from Webull. So use that and you don't have to buy anything, but you will be supporting this YouTube channel. So I truly appreciate that. Other than that, I'm out of here. Bye.